Hey family, you are here with your hosts, Jordana, Novena, and Curtis. We are here um, for Bold and Beautiful. We are excited today. We have an awesome guest that we're just, we just can't wait to hear from. Her name is Lonnie Grant. Um, she is so many things. I don't even know where to start. She is a motivational speaker, a life coach, a, a dance teacher. She has her own studio. I mean, the Business girl, lady. listen, she's mm-hmm. just doing it, right? Mm-hmm. So we are excited to hear from Ms. Grant this morning. Um, and before we get started, of course, we're always going to open up in prayer. So, um, Sister Novena, would you open us up in prayer, please? Certainly, certainly. Mm, Father, we just come to you right now in Jesus' name, thanking you for this moment, Lord God, thanking you for um, just how you bring us all together as one, Lord God. We thank you for um, our speaker today, Lord God, uh, and I just thank you for blessing her life and allowing her to be a blessing to those you, you bring around her, Lord God. We just thank you for this broadcast and all that you're going to do in and through each one of us sitting here right now, Lord God. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 So I'm going to hand it off to my brother, Reverend Curtis, to start the show off. All right, all right. I'm so excited here to be here to this evening in the studio. We are right here, and we're about to talk to Miss Lonnie Grant, who I have been knowing since we were teenagers. But she has an awesome book that is entitled Beauty After Broken. So I just really want her to talk about, you know, that book, her her story, how it came, how it birthed, and where she's at today. So Lonnie, tell us, you know, what motivated you first and foremost to this write a book? So first of all, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me on the show and being a guest. I'm super excited. So Yes, what inspired me to write the book was I knew that I needed to be healed. That is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. I realized that, hey, it was time for me to share my story, be healed, Mm -hmm. so I can help others. You know, I knew that the curses needed to be broken, and I needed to set a different path for my children. Mm -hmm. So that was, like, the biggest inspiration. That's what's up. That's what's up. Definitely, um... So when you talk about being healed, like, what was some of the scars that you had to be healed from? So I just think back from different abuse. So I had an uncle who was really, really intense with verbally abuse, physical abuse, um, molestation, um, the fact that my mother didn't raise me, that bond being broken and actually being raised by a different family who wasn't actually mine. So feeling that abandonment, that emotional emotional roller coaster, that just it was a very toxic environment. Yeah. So it was a lot that I had to deal with. And then the fact that I had some um educational issues in school, delays because of the drug usage from my mother that was a strain because I didn't understand, like, okay, why can I learn like the other kids? But not realizing because of her drug usage, I had to learn differently. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's amazing. So, you know, I always like to find out people's God story. So, like, when was the first time you thought about God? Like, he waved at you? Like, what's your first experience like that you can remember? Okay, so I think my first experience was, even though my environment was toxic, I remember this one organization that used to come in Southeast D.C. every Friday called Kids Connection. It was a sidewalk school, um, Sunday school. Oh, wow. And it was amazing. I remember, you know, Pastor um, Keith and his wife, they was a Caucasian company. Um, couple that started this sidewalk um, Bible study and they would come past every Thursday to hand out a scripture and you had to memorize it. That was the only way you can get that that snack. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I wanted that snack. (laughs) Yeah, when you don't used to, you know, you're not used to getting snacks. You tell me I gotta memorize mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna memorize. Mm-hmm. It. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so right. every Friday when they would come and set up, you know, their station right in the middle of the block, they would always call on certain kids, say, "Hey, what's the memory verse?" 
and Lanetta will always raise her hand. <laughs> I got it. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, having that those people that come into our neighborhood to teach us about God and use mm -hmm. puppets, mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. it made it so fun. And I'm mm -hmm. like, how old were you? I think I was like maybe five or six. Okay. And when I remember them coming around, because they were around for a long time, and actually I think they still exist, mm. um, where they go to the different projects in Southeast D.C. Wow, that's awesome. Kids Connection. Mm. It you, was amazing. And you grew up in uh, Berry Farms, right? Yep. So okay. I know it was kind of like, uh, that was probably part of the struggle on that area side of, the, uh, side of the, your life as well. Um, but So how long did you live in Southeast and... And was that where all your trauma took place or was it later on in life as well? Well, it really started there because my grandmother, she, you know, raised her kids there. So all her grandkids came that generational, you know, so we got to see the brokenness, the, the poverty, just the violence, you know. Mm -hmm. So at when you age. at an early age, so when you think about in that environment, most of the kids are like that. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not out of the norm mm -hmm. to see so grandmothers raising, raising a lot of children, mm -hmm. or you seeing the dads or the the moms on the corner strung out. It wasn't out the norm, mm -hmm. or people standing in front of your yard selling drugs or drinking. So that was the norm to walk past people. It's like oh, they shooting crack or they're doing that. That was the norm. So I think about again from that child that birth. The struggle mm -hmm. and that becoming my norm until we moved out about when I was 12 or 13. And I talk about that in a book. Mm -hmm. um, due to my brother, you know, having a tragedy, him seeing um, some violence that caused us to move. Um, and that move was a lot because being so young, mm -hmm. you know, seeing yeah. such violence and us being shifted from that location to now moving somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And it was just a lot. So it, it started from there, but it kept going. And it felt like it was getting worse. Hmm. Was it ever a time that you felt like, like your world was just, it was just so heavy that you was just drowning. And at that point, what was the, what was the thing that kept you going? If you felt that way? Well, I did feel like I was drowning a lot, but one of the things that I felt like kind of kept me was, even though my mother wasn't there, when she would come around, make them broken promises, just the fact of seeing her yeah, get, is that connection and saying, there's a little hope. And then I had my aunt, which is her sister, mm -hmm. who would come and get us on the weekend sometime mm -hmm. and just show us another world, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I'm always grateful for my auntie for that. It's like, oh, it is a little hope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. God, you, you didn't all the way forget about me. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gave me some peace when she would come and say, you know, ask my grandmother, can I get, the, you know, me and my brother for mm -hmm. the weekend or whatever. So that's a very real thought um, when you said that, um, God, you didn't all the way forget about me. I feel like there are thousands, if not millions of people who feel like forgotten, mm -hmm. like because people grow up in such brokenness. It, it could be like, first, if there is a God, how can he let this kind of stuff happen to me? Right. And um, because, you know, people say God is love, but it don't feel like mm -hmm. it because of what I'm living in. So for you, how did you reconcile that? How did you reconcile like there is a God, even though I was allowed to go through this stuff? Like, mm -hmm. how did you how did you put those two things together? I think it hit me about a few years ago. I took out my birth certificate. And Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Come on came now, to you know you want to shout right there, Novena. You know you do. That's, That's my favorite. And <laughs> it's my favorite scripture because <laughs> every time, go ahead, go ahead, say it. Yes, say it. Say yes. God. And I just break it down so simple. He know the plans that he had for me, mm -hmm. not to harm me, mm -hmm. but to prosper me. That's yeah, right. Yeah. So I, what comes to mind for me is not harm me, 
That's what always comes. So every time I think about the trauma, you didn't mean it to harm me. So even when I look back at my birth certificate, I always look to see my name is at the top. So if my name is at the top and you know I'm first, mm-hmm. you planted me first. So I always look at it like, well, God, you knew I was That's first. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that right there alone tells me, you you got me. You got a yeah. plan for me. Yeah. You got a plan for me, even when I don't see it. So even though I would try to blame, you know, my mother for not being there, I always go back to the birth certificate and say, but they at the bo- they at the bottom. Mm. Mm. You only use them to, to get, get you me here. here. What a way so let me go ahead and <laughs> say on, thank, you thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's when I understood the honor when it said honor thy mother and father. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about were they there or who raised me or all of this. It was like the honor is I used them to get you here. Mm -hmm. That's the honor. (laughs) So that's what I had to to realize Mm -hmm. and say, okay, you didn't, it's at the top. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which means you meant for me to be you, here. You you meant for me. Right, right. So I kept saying, God, you didn't mean to harm me. Mm. You knew I was going to go through it. You picked these people. Mm. I, I couldn't pick them, but you had. This is my story. You knew I was going to be born at Howard. You, I couldn't pick my hospital. You knew all of these things. Mm-hmm. So why am I? In my mind, going back and forth. Well, you left me. You didn't love me. And this and that. Yes, I went through that. And then something clicking was mm-hmm. like, hmm. we're not doing that. Mm-mm, no more. No, we're we, we going to be thankful. Mm. And that's when it hit me. Mm. That's awesome. Mm. So it just definitely seems like that, you know, God has gave you a, a, a divine perception about your reasons for being here not just for being here but also for what you went through now i remember when i first met you you know um i didn't i didn't know all the things that went on in in, in your past or or even in the present when i met you at as as yeah, when you were like 15 maybe 16 years old at the time um and now and looking back and seeing you know how god used all that to bring you to center stage where you at right now because mm-hmm. now you're helping a lot of people find their liberation, find their beauty past their brokenness and your book shares a lot of things that you experienced and your experiences wasn't for naught because now those experiences are unlocking the prison doors that some mm-hmm. females and even some males are still in right now so tell us about how do you use your experiences I just shared something but how do you use specifically your experiences to liberate other people First of all, I, even going back to the birth certificate, because I, I deal with so many youth um, and them just, you know, feeling hopeless because maybe their parents may was on drugs or same similar, you know, situation. And I get them to come out of this shame and giving their self permission to forgive themselves. Mm-hmm. It's not your fault. You don't get to pick, you know, and just sharing my story and just being totally authentic with them and not trying to cover it up and not trying to throw fancy words. This is what it is. Mm -hmm. You can make it. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Mm -hmm. Just because the labels was put on you or somebody told you, oh, you're going to be like your father. You're going to be like Mm -hmm. your mother. No, Mm -hmm. your name at the top. That's right. I like that. They at the bottom. You're you going to be all right. Yeah. You're your own person. You're going to be good. But also to unlock it, you got to believe it. Right. You can say it all day long and say, okay, I'm going to be good. I'm, no, you have to really feel that thing in your heart yes. and know that you're going to be good. So that's my ministry to the young people is getting them to understand that. Forgive these people. Mm-hmm. Forgive them. And, you know, I, you know, the kids battle because I remember being there where it's like, why can't I forget? No, she ain't do this for me. He ain't do this. He should have been there. And it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. but it's that's real. Right. I, right, I right. get the feeling <clears throat> I've been there, but it's going to hold your next level back. Right. I promise you. How do you know? Because I've been there. <laughs> All right. 
Oh my <laughs> God, I've been there. Right. Where you think you have really forgiven somebody and you realize how you show up in the world. Mm-hmm. Your relationships, your friendships, your jobs, mm-hmm. your business, mm-hmm. and things are not prospering. Cause you ain't, you don't have a forgiving heart. It's still broken. Mm. How can you want something whole mm. if you're not whole? Mm. So I, I really get them to understand. You have to forgive them, and 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 literally forgive and detach yourself from that energy. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna it that thing heavy. Yeah. You know what? And it that it, it, is, it is heavy, and it, it, it's amazing though too. Like. We talked about earlier, not um, just off air, about how grown adults, um, because of the heaviness of their past, they they tuck it away and they move through life and never deal with it until something else arises. So I know there was some things in your life that you came from a place where you came out of that trauma and you were really living your life. You were moving towards your goals and everything else, but at the same time you had tucked some stuff away. Um, but then the bottom dropped out. So share with us about what happens when the bottom drops out. You know, mm. when, you, when you think you got it all together, you 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 now then pulled yourself together from everything you went through, and now you're moving into your goals, your visions, your dreams, your hopes. But then all of a sudden, trauma hits your life Oof. in another way. Mm-hmm. It's not designed or dressed the same way it was in your past. But then the bottom drops out. Now, how do you recuperate? Mm. I think for me, I didn't know how. Right. That trauma, it was like Mm -hmm. the trigger. I didn't know how to deal with triggers. And I know that showed up in my my, um, personal, Mm -hmm. where it was like my job. My job was on the line because I got triggered Mm -hmm. and I dropped the ball. Because I said, well, I'm all right. You know, I, I did this. I, I I made it to college. I made it to this job. And guess what creeps back in? Mm. It shows back up. But like you said, differently. Right. And now the ball dropped. But I don't even know that I'm sick. Right. I don't even know that I still... I don't even know nothing about healing at this point. I don't even know what to heal. Mm-hmm. So now it shows up as the trigger again, and now I lose everything and become homeless. Where everything got snatched. I'm like, everything, Lord? I, I thought I was doing good now. Mm-hmm. I didn't do drugs. I didn't do that. That's what I thought. But it took all of that to be snatched away for me to understand it is something, it's a root to this right, thing. Right. It's mm-hmm. more. It's more to what I'm thinking, like, well, I did this, well, and it's like, it, you missing it. Mm-hmm. You missing it. And I was missing that key piece that yeah. something else needed attention. And I had to get to that. Yeah, so it sounds like, because um, I think sometimes we do that, So it's, and, and everybody has their own level of brokenness and mm-hmm. trauma and we all go through stuff. Mm-hmm. Some people's stuff is worse or, you know, not mm-hmm. as bad as others. But sometimes we try and perform our way out of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. So if you come from a broken place and you manage not to be as broken as what you came from, mm-hmm. like my mama did drugs. I didn't do drugs. Check. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, my mama dropped out of high school. I graduated high school. Check. Mm-hmm. My mama didn't go to college. I went to college. Check. You think you're good and you think I you're think progressing. So. And right. outwardly to people, it looks mm-hmm. like you're on the ball. Like you have yeah, it. Got it. But, that, but when we don't address that heart stuff and that soul stuff. That, mm-hmm. that, that part. Listen. Yeah. It mm-hmm. gets real in it these gets, streets. It, yeah. it do. Listen. Leaking out. When, listen, people, when situations come and that elbows yeah. come and get you right in the face, you're like, wait a minute. I wasn't, re- I I wasn't, wasn't ready. ready. I wasn't ready. I, I thought because I had performed mm-hmm. to a certain extent and I had gotten to a place and I didn't, I, I didn't, my brokenness didn't look like hers. Mm-hmm. I ain't you thought you were good. Not, that part. Listen, I wasn't on the street like she was, so I'm good. Right. But we still have to we still have to work through our own stuff, mm-hmm. and and I think sometimes um, we negate um, what trauma has the effect that trauma mm-hmm. has in the rest of our life. Like That's we think cool. because you know because you came out of high school and you graduated mm-hmm. and you because you know you may not have done this or that or whatever mm-hmm. that you're okay. And I was like, no, 
everything you go through affects how you show up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The good, the bad, the, bad. the ugly, yes. whatever it is, yes. it shows up in your personality. It everything. shows up in your responses. It shows up in your thought patterns. Mm-hmm. Everything. And how so, you deal with people. Right. Unconsciously. And a lot of times, some of that stuff, like, you know, it's so funny because I'm really close to my mom now. But before that, when I would respond like her, I'd be like, oh my God, I sound like Pat Randall. <laughs> and I, I'm not doing it on purpose, but because right. I'm around her so right. much... That's how I respond. And yeah. so sometimes we are raised in environments. Sure. And so we learn how to respond a certain way. We don't even recognize learn. that that stuff is mm-hmm. from way back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's learning. And, mm-hmm. I, to- I totally agree with that because, you know, the reality of it is, is that when things do, like you said, that life comes and gives you an elbow, you know, it's not the adult that responds. It's that, it's it, we, it's that child. It's mm-hmm. that broken child that's still there that mm-hmm. never really grew up past that stage. Mm-hmm. And the reaction is actually that child and not actually the adults you have become. And some and some of us recognize it and some of us don't recognize it. Um, and some of us need other people to point it mm-hmm. out for us. Right, or, right. You know, or to be a mentor to that child that's inside of us. Because sometimes we have to be, even be a mentor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we've come to a place of healing. Because yeah. I've noticed that even in my own life, when you come to a place of healing, sometimes that little boy that's still in there tries to say, okay, no, I, let me handle this. And then the adult says to him, no, no, listen, this we is, don't do it this we, way. We, don't. Don't. Yeah. Right. we have to do it this way right. now. And then he begins to mature mm-hmm. till he gets to another level where he can agree with the adult. But, <laughs> that's you know, that's you know, real. Seriously, I feel seriously, all of that. You know? All of it. Because that's, yeah. that's the things that I've been going through myself. But um, I know you were talking about being healed and triggers. And it seems like these are steps to your healing. Mm-hmm. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and that's um, I hear you putting a voice to those things that happened so long ago in your life, and that voice is um, helping and encouraging others, so that when you recognize it, you have some words for it now. Mm -hmm. So you say you work with a lot of young people in different areas. What other areas? Are you working with young people? So I teach dance. Mm -hmm. I love dance. Mm -hmm. Um, I talk about that in my book, how, you know, back then the recreation centers had activities. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I like today. Absolutely. You know, so, you know, it wasn't the most fanciest place. It wasn't like a studio. It wasn't like your Debbie Islands, but Mm -mm. it was our Debbie Islands. And you paying attention to the young people. You paid attention. Mm -hmm. You had adults who actually cared. They volunteered, but they cared. Mm -hmm. You know, so they were put together fashion shows and double dutch, (laughs) hopscotch, all of those things. And it was free. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't like the fancy. fancy, Mm -hmm. But we learned so much. And it was a community. That's the word. It was community. So that's what brought brought me peace was dancing. You know, so once I got older, I started taking classes and started paying for myself to do professional stuff. So I said, one day I'm going to open up my own studio. Mm. And But in the midst of me opening it, I was coming from the mindset of the broken child. Mm. Because I wanted to save the world and say, well... I just want everybody to dance. But I, I, again, when you operating from an unhealed space, you remember these, these, a lot of them parents was triggers for right, me. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why do I want the best for that child? And why they, you, and it was like, Lonnie, you can't save everybody. Right. And I wanted to because I knew I kept putting myself right. mm-hmm. into that space to say, I, I, I wanted that. How can you not? How watch can it? You, right, right? How can you not see this is what your child needs? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, even though my motive was, I felt like was coming from a good place, mm-hmm. it was also coming from a broken place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I had to understand, like, mm-hmm. okay, Lonnie, you want to help this this community, the low income, because you obviously mm-hmm. came from there. Right. But now you putting yourself in low income. Ooh. To do it. Right. Come on. And now. it's jeopardizing your peace mm. to the point that you don't even love it mm. no more because what you went in it to do, now you got the parents who's triggering you and it was attacking me. So I had to sit out for a minute right. 
and sit down and was like, hmm. what is going on here? Because this is something I love to do, but I don't, it doesn't feel it good. It doesn't feel good. And I want to be able to minister to the children. Like, I felt like my studio was different because growing up, even though, you know, it wasn't the best, we had structure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, right. And that's what I wanted to create. I got, I didn't want people to always look at the black girls and think they couldn't do ballet. Mm -hmm. They didn't have structure. So my mind, my mindset was like, no, when I open up my school, they going to be able to do this. I want these little girls to be able to go to Alvin Ailey. I want them to go to Dance Theater Hall. That was my mind. But I forgot who their parents were. They were mm -hmm. watching every single day. Who they were watching. They were listening to. Their them. standards wasn't high. Mm -hmm. So I'm you. I'm talking about some Debbie Allen. They looking at me. No, what you talking about? She doing Kiki from around the way. Right. Exactly. Right. She gonna be on the dance team at her school. school. That's about it. Right. That's it. <laughs> so they couldn't right. understand. So I was fighting so hard against that. Mm -hmm. You know, having self-esteem workshops mm -hmm. incorporated into my mm -hmm. dance mm -hmm. and getting the backlash. So what you trying to say? You know, I'm like, what? Yeah. I, I just... You've been attacked. I was feeling so attacked because I'm like, okay, how can I teach this child this eight count when she don't even think she's beautiful? Mm -hmm. So I, I that was one of my methods to try to bring That's the root. Get that was the root. root. And I was getting attacked and I said, God, what it maybe this ain't supposed to be what I'm doing. <laughs> so do you still have your dance studio? I don't. Okay. Okay. When I say in two maybe about three years ago, I literally had a nervous breakdown. Literally. And it caused me to tap out. Yeah. Um, and I had became so mean and bitter. It was like I was tired. I was being attacked. And it was like I was being pushed in the wall. And then all the emotions started coming up from my past. Me hearing my uncle say, I told you you weren't going to be nothing. See? I told you this. Why are you trying to do something? See? And it started attacking me, and it took me out to that last recital. I said, I can't do this no more. Dream killers show up in all ways, fashions, and forms, and all times, too, you know. But um, I'm glad, because at this stage, we can see that the dream didn't die. It didn't. So what was the, what was the, the thing that kind of breathed resurrection back into your hopes, your dreams, you know, when... Somebody tried to kill your dreams. I had to realize, Lonnie, you can't do it all. Mm -hmm. Lonnie, you got to chill out. Like, now I need you to be in, in alignment with God. And I've realized when you try to do things out of your own will, mm -hmm. how chaos and mm -hmm. everything. So I started to take ownership of what part did I play? Right, right. In this. Right. Okay, God, you gave me this vision. You gave me this purpose. And I think I lost my why. Mm. I stepped out of your will. And once I've realized that and started to get back and say, God, show me my why. Right, right. And every day, even to now, I'm always like, God, you move through me when I teach. Mm. I don't want to get none of the glory. You just use me as a vessel. Whoever you bring, these parents, these children, everything. So now I'm more careful about me trying to operate. And that's where I felt like things started to get messy when I started to say, well, I trained her. Come on. I did that. Uh -uh. Oh, uh -uh. that's how your daughter got to Debbie Allen. Hmm. I was like, oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's what we doing now? I stepped out of his will. So you think you're just going to step out the wheel and think everything going to be kosher? It's not. Mm. So when I sat back and I started to self-evaluate and get those mentors and the life coach and started to... Investing in yourself. In myself. I said, I ain't no good to nobody mm. if I'm not doing my part. Right. So I heard a couple of things. Mm -hmm. One, 
sometimes we can have really great intentions when we do something, but when we do it from a broken place, mm-hmm. yeah. it's not going to have the desired result. Like That's it right. is important to, like you said, do the work, do, do the, the work. work, do the work and, and get to a healed place so that you can move through the world being a whole person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I heard is sometimes even, even through the healing process and when you're healed, I know I was talking about this earlier um, with my mother is that then you can have, you can see destiny, you can see purpose. And you'd be like, God, yes, I see it. I'm with you. We're going to start this thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We started because God on. gave us, That's gave it. it to us. Yeah. But then we're like, all right, God, you step aside because I got, I got this thing. I'm going to set it up like this. Mm-hmm. Just now listen, I'm now if, if something don't work, I'm going to come to you and pray and be like, God, why isn't it working? Mm-hmm. But I got this. I'm gonna, you you I stand can. over to the side, God. And I'm going to work it. And then, you know, if anything, you know, if I need you, I'll call on you. Otherwise. And how important it is to, in each part of the process, if he's the one who gave you the vision, who gave you, Mm -hmm. continue to include him Mm -hmm. as you set it up, as you start working through it. Because we were talking earlier off air about distractions. Mm -hmm. And then people will start having input about how you should do things and why you should do it. And and listen, how it should look and who you should be with and who you should partner with. And it is important to make sure that you are getting that vertical direction so that you can be moving with God and not be like, wait a minute, God, wait. Where, right, where, right. where did God go? Like, we, I right. thought we were together. Well, you left him. Listen, yeah, yeah. and God him. is back around the corner. Like yeah. that, that boy just waiting. waiting for you. Just come, I knew you did come it. back around. Come yeah, back right. around this corner, <laughs> right? Be right there. We ain't even Listen. quiet. Yeah, did real. you send? Did you send this person? You know how like mm-hmm. you on Facebook Wait. and and, and, and these friend requests come that you ain't or never seen this person. Like, uh-uh. yeah. Somebody suggests. Oh, right. Who sent you? <laughs> you exactly. That's we got to be though, right? Yeah. That's funny. Absolutely. It's so true. Absolutely. Y'all pray about everything. Even my parents now, things that I wasn't doing at first, I'm like, God, you gave me these parents. Now let me take authority and say, God, I pray that, you know, financial with these parents, their health. Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing all of that. Mm -hmm. It was just, Mm -hmm. oh, bring your child. Come on in. Oh, you late? I'm shutting my door. I was like drill sergeant mode. Yeah. Because that's what I seen. Mm -hmm. Right. Drill sergeant mode. And I say, okay, I still can make this fun. I still can be this, but how to do that? So that's what everything I had to do, I had to change. So now my company is way different. Oh, wow. Yeah. The whole energy is different. So what's the name of your company? Dynasty Arts and Movement. Dynasty Arts and Arts Movement. Movement. And you don't just have Dynasty Arts and Movement, you also have your book. Yes. Beauty Out the Broken, but you also have a show on YouTube, right? Yes. So, the this, this show that I'm about to start is called The Breakthrough Lounge. Mm-hmm. I think the show you're speaking of, um, I had a chance to be able to partner with another young lady who was running her show, and I came on as her co-host. And that was that was a great trial run. I started in about January just to see how... The media stuff is ran. But I was used to doing interviews, but it was different being, I guess, in front of the camera all the time. Mm -hmm. So it gave me some experience. So now I'm venturing to do my show called The Breakthrough Lounge. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the times, because I love how real and transparent you are. One day we were sitting here when I was telling my co-host about you, right? We pulled one of your shows up on YouTube, and it was hot, remember? She was like, ladies, this is not a weave nor eyelash. Yes. Right oh, I, that's the, okay, that's the one thing people really love watching me, because they be like, girl, you be telling the truth. You don't even care when nobody talk about Like, I don't. You got to be authentic. I said, yeah, I wear my little la- my lashes, my weeds, my whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when it's hot, I will take it no, off. I don't no care problem. if I'm driving at the red light. It's going to come off. <laughs> Can you feel it? Like, listen, it's okay. Hey, it's listen. Too much. I've done and that. it's okay. I've done that. Let's high five on that. Yeah, and it's okay. Been there, done that. Been there. Yeah. Taking and the wig off, put it in the, in the passenger seat. I don't care. You're going to see these, you know, you're going to see these Corn Southeast cornrows. Listen. Girl. And it's okay. It's okay. Girl. I, I know who I am. Hello. Right. These this wig don't define that. Come on. Absolutely. So that's you know that's just me. That's <laughs> I love I've it. always I love just it. been like that, and it's like okay, I'm gonna just be real. And 
I'm now using the power of my voice mm-hmm. in, a, in a better way than I did at first because mm-hmm. growing up in that toxic environment, it's like you just, I used it in the wrong way. Mm-hmm. The moment somebody say something to me, I was attack mode. I was a fighter. You know, so it's like, oh, I don't have to respond no, to that. No, 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 no. Yep. Respond to who? You say what? Who are they? Energy. Right. Who are they? <laughs> so it's like I don't need to respond, and it's like, okay, what did God say? Mm-hmm. You know. So even when people give you ideas and say, oh, you should partner with it, that's not what He told me to do. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm okay. I'm yeah. good. Oh, she being bougie? No, that's mm-hmm. I didn't. I I didn't get the memo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't get the memo. Right. right. So I got. I'm, I'm good. good over here. <laughs> Right, I mean, absolutely. And people, like, they'll try. Listen, they'll try and pull you and tell oh, you yeah. what you should do and how you should do it. And yeah, they'll use great God ideas. and keep. Exactly. Well, God told no. He didn't listen. They got that. He didn't your see. Spirit. see. Yeah. He didn't <laughs> see. You didn't get that. You didn't get that copy. Yeah. <laughs> or did he BCC me? <laughs> What's the problem? Because he didn't. I didn't see it. <laughs> so people, you know, I don't have. You know, now that I've really felt like I'm stepping into my voice, I'm mm. like. That word no, no, became the best friend. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. and standing in it, and, and, and be okay, and be guilty. okay. No, I can't do that. Like we were talking about earlier, not being. You don't have to feel like you need to be in everything. Right, mm-hmm. everything ain't for everybody. And when you do that, what place is that coming from? Going back to the motives, right. right. Let's check it out. That's right. Why you feel like you need. That's right. It is so important to know. So that's why I always check now. Even when people ask me, I'm like, okay, where was that coming from? Mm -hmm. And there's times I've responded like, yeah, and then I go back to the person. I'm like, first of all, let me apologize to you. I didn't hear God on that. I moved too quickly. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be an assignment. Mm -hmm. I didn't turn down a few speaking engagements. Mm -hmm. Because once I go pee people social medias and I view them for a minute, mm-hmm. I'm like, right, right. You know who you're I'm, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. I'll be in the audience. Yeah. If, if you need me to put up a balloon or something, I'm not speaking. Right. Yeah. right. And I'm okay with that. You know, I, I know it's hard for some people to understand that because they're like, well, you can be on this person platform and you exactly. can be on this. And don't I'm you like, need the exposure? And- yeah. And it's like, Mm-mm. what you mean? Mm-hmm. God, if God is going to expose me to whatever, it's going to be through him. Not because this person just got a gig on NBC. They got that. That's right. right. What if I wasn't attached to that? Mm-hmm. And we probably going to be close. That don't mean that it's my turn. Right, right. I'm going to just go ahead and be patient. Because I know what it looks like when I operate it out of his will. Mm. I know what that looks like. Yeah, not forgetting. I'm good. I lost everything. Right. Yeah, no. I'm good. No. Nope. I know what I lost. Learn your lesson. I learned my lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so important. That's, um, so Graham Cook, the one who I was telling you about, who I went to his um, conference a couple of years ago, he has his teaching about the wilderness mm. and about the necessity of periods of wilderness, what you learn in the wilderness. Yes, don't forget. Um, Mm. And and times when like when it's barren, where you lost everything and your world gets really small because you ain't got a whole lot of distractions because you ain't got a right. whole lot of stuff, right. Right? right? Right. And he talks about just you can have joy in that time. There's so much growth that happens in that time, and it's important because what happens is when you come out and and the next obstacles that hit you, you you have you have gotten some integrity and come some on. character. And some mm. revelation mm-hmm. and some peace and all that stuff that happens mm-hmm. in this wilderness mm-hmm. time to get you through, through. once you come out. Because it's, I mean, it's a time. It's, it is. There's a time yeah. where it starts and a time where it mm-hmm. ends. Right, you go right. through it. That's and nice. he talks about the importance of learning a lesson so you don't have to go through the wilderness again. Like, again, so I got that. that. I got that lesson. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. I got it. And mm-hmm. I think gratitude, too, what came oh up gosh. for me was yes. being, I remember being at this shelter and I was saying, well, why I'm here? Mm-hmm. Well, why are you not here? Why, 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 why couldn't I use you to be here? And I kept, I couldn't understand why he got me here. And I, I guess as I was in the room with those other women and them always gravitating towards me, I'm like, well, 
stay over there on your bunk bed. <laughs> you know, like I couldn't understand. Like I was that vessel mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where it was. He was just using me to talk to people, minister to, like just using he kept me. just using me. So again, in that wilderness, when everything is gone, we think about all this bad stuff about. God, why you do this to me? And why mm. you do... He was like, I sent you there for a reason. Mm. Hello? It was work to be done there. Listen, Graham and his thing said, listen, I done spent six months, $10,000. I got 14 angels on assignment to get you into this wilderness. Mm-hmm. Don't be trying to... He was like, we got all these Christians. Like, I'm a Christian. Get me out. Now. <laughs> get me out. <laughs> like, yeah. you don't want to go through the process. Right. You just want... Like, I'm a Christian. Like, I don't have to do this. Right. I don't have to go through nothing. Honey. But it's important. It's important. Think important. about the things that we learned in the wilderness. Absolutely. I learned how to shut my mouth. Because I learned how to choose my battles. Mm. Um, I've learned how to say thank you and please. Mm. Um, uh, it's a lot that I learned. I learned how to handle my money better. Because mm-hmm. I, I had money. And mm. I still went to that place of um, mm. locked up. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, He was showing me that not only was I physically locked up, um, it was some things he had to handle while while I was there. So I um I learned how to handle that mouth. Mm. Yeah, I mean I, it's it's a, it takes a lot for me to Listen. say some stuff out the side of my mouth now. Not to say she's not down in there. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you know how to come out. Uh, Let's be real. Yeah. but I have to face the consequences. Twisted. Mm-hmm. And and I know the consequences now of saying things that are um, unnecessary. Mm. And um, and then then I get baited. Now even thirty what twenty years later, I still get baited. And and it's a choice. You gonna let her say that to you? Like, girl, you better than me. <laughs> That's right. Just keep that. Mm-hmm. Y'all can't see and this, but we give him looks right now. Yeah, we give him yeah, looks. Yeah, yeah. This, this is this, this is, is um, this is when this is power under restraint. Right. Like God, yeah. I'm gonna choose humility in this moment. Yeah. I'm gonna keep my mouth closed because right. everything don't have to be proven. No. That's, right. That's, right. That's, yes. right. That's the thing. Everything yes. don't have to yep. be proven. It does not. Wow. Why whom? are you proving it to whom? Mm-hmm. Like Who I would rather choose these two acts and thirty eight on you now <laughs> instead of what I would use Absolutely. back today, yes. right? But you know, it, it comes like what you said earlier to that word of gratefulness, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because of course those wilderness experiences, you know, they do have this it's purging moments, you purging. know, where it purges you to the place and like you said, you come out with character, you come out with 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 strength, you come out with all these different things. So then when you get to that place though, then you came out. And now you're in the position now where you're being tested of what you already went through. Like you said, oh, I already know what it looked like. Mm -hmm. Because I know I could do that. I could. But I also know the consequences of that. But Lord, I'm grateful that I don't have to do that. (laughs) Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and you ought to be glad too. Yes. Well, take it You can't take it for granted. But what came out of that recent experience for me when I felt like I was baited? Was two things, and I mean, because I wrestled with it, because I'm like, how could? Okay, just know your why, and I heard that um, mm. earlier. You got to know why. Mm-hmm. Why didn't I speak up? And I knew why, because mm-hmm. I knew the consequences. Mm-hmm. And then understand my filter. My filter may be different from your filter and your filter, mm-hmm. but I'm okay with my filter because this is I know my filter. Mm-hmm. You know, and once I came through that um, experience. I felt so much better. Just that, that me time. Because sure enough, the next day, girl, I don't know how you let somebody talk. Because you don't know how. So I had to explain to them my why mm-hmm. and my filter. Mm-hmm. And then it gave them something to think about. Amen. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. might have blessed them. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, it, it's amazing, like, because your book, the, the title of it is Beauty After Broken. And mm-hmm. when every time I say you know, the title of your book, mm-hmm. and then also knowing your yesterday and knowing your today, right? Um, it just reminds me of Isaiah 61, 2, it says, or 3. It says that he will give us beauty for our ashes, mm-hmm. the oil of joy mm-hmm. for our mourning, and the garment of praise mm-hmm. for the spirit of heaven, mm-hmm. that they may be called trees of righteousness, the mm-hmm. planting of the Lord. I, you know, My it's God. a... Cue your shout right here. Woo! Ah! Glory! Ah! 
And that's what it <laughs> really home. reminds really? me of. It's like, you know, because now you're showing other people, not just women, but other mm-hmm, people, mm-hmm. How, to, how to look at where the ashes are mm-hmm. and watch God turn the ashes into beauty. Mm-hmm. And where the morning is of yesterday's trauma, now it's a garment of praise or, uh, you know, the oil of joy. Yes. And then now giving them a brand new cloak to wear mm-hmm. now. No mm-hmm. longer the abused, no longer the victim, no, no longer the Mm-mm. drug addict, no, no, no longer all these Mm-mm. things, but now you're now a tree Mm-mm. that others may find shade. Good yes, God, yes, God. and oh, beautiful. Oh, so, yeah. so, 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 so I, when I hear your book and I think about what God has done and what God is, you, is using you to do, mm-hmm. it's really the proof that there is a miracle working God. It is. And, 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 and you give that to So now, right now, it's listeners right now. It's young girls. It's young men. It's grown men. It's grown women. That's right now. They're hearing it. Mm-hmm. And they might be saying, well, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. But I want you to speak to that young girl. Speak to that young man. Speak to that grown woman. Speak to that grown man about how to find their beauty. Mm, after being broken. Come on Come now. Come on now. Wow. That title, and everybody always asks me, how did I get that title? Mm-hmm. I was asleep, and he woke me up in the middle of the night. Won't mm-hmm. he do that? Beauty After Broken, The Girl in the Mirror. Mm-hmm. So it's a baby picture of me in a uh, my adult picture looking up in the mirror with the little girl. Mm. <sighs> wow. It's amazing. So... One of the inspirations that I try to give a lot of young people is that forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing that most people literally struggle with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The power of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgiving yourself. Mm -hmm. Letting yourself off the hook. Because I think we hold ourselves so hostage to say, but what if? Mm. Mm. What if I did this? He wouldn't have came in my room. Mm. Mm. Jesus. What if I wouldn't have wore this? He mm. wouldn't have came in my room. Mm. Wow. What if I would have came out looking better? Maybe she would have wanted me. You think about all of these things and it's like, forgive yourself. Mm-hmm. Let yourself off the hook. And then find it in your heart to really forgive mm. them. You know, and not shaming them, you know, because I think we get caught up in shame as well. Like, well, they did, they did, they did. And it's like, God, you know, you're forgiving God. Mm-hmm. We have done some things. Come on, did he forgive right. us? Mm-hmm. Right. That ain't all the way good. And before we place so much as a child on our parents, remember, we may be parents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How is that going to come back around yeah. to us? Because sometimes I remember even as a kid where, you know, you would give your parents a hard time and they always say, <laughs> mm-hmm. wait till you have kids. That's yeah. right. Wait till you have kids. Yeah. One day. Mm-hmm. And you don't realize how serious that thing come back and get you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you end up seeing some stuff in your kids come and you like, Mm-mm. that was me. That was me. <laughs> yep. So it's like we got to even as... You know, teenagers, as the teenagers, you got to be careful about your words. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That you place so much shame on people that it comes back and then you don't even know how to deal with it. Right, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. So I really want, you know, you guys to really, really look in the mirror and not just see the physical appearance, but I want you to look in the mirror to see what your heart Mm-hmm. And actually be honest with yourself. I'm hurt. You know, I'm abandoned. Say those things. Mm-hmm. I think we're not truthful and we always say, I'm okay. Right. I'm okay. You're I'm not okay. okay. You're and far you're from okay. You're afraid. You're mm-hmm. fearful. Mm-hmm. You doubt. Say these things. They ain't going away. You have to just call it for what it is. Mm -hmm. Stand in that truth. If you got to cry, cry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got to get some tips. I mean, cry, cry. Mm -hmm. And understand, you just ain't got to stay there. Right. Right. But it's necessary to get be in the them feelings because we kind of put feelings like, you ain't supposed to feel like that. 
He shouldn't cry because those things was told to us. Right, right, right. Shouldn't do that, especially for males. Don't cry. You better toughen up, mm-hmm. you know. And it makes that young boy think that the feeling that he may have is not even real. Mm-hmm. So he, when he finds that relationship that looks like love, mm-hmm. he, I can't touch that. Mm-hmm. I can't go mm-hmm. there with you. I can't be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And be missing out. And you missing out. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. you miss out. Because you don't really get to sit in your feelings. So I want you guys to really sit in that. Mm-hmm. And own it. Mm-hmm. And move past it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of the things that when you said that, it made me think of your girl Ayala. Call a thing a thing. thing. Call it a thing. I love call that. A thing. Call a, a thing, thing a thing. It can't be called nothing else. <laughs> Listen, so just call it out. And call just it call it thing. out. And keep on yes. moving. And say it. Yeah. And own your experience. You know, even if, you know, somebody look at your experience like, well, I don't remember that. Because, you know, people get amnesia. Ooh, don't they do that? Yeah, people yeah. get a little amnesia. <laughs> yeah. You know, you forgot you left, left me right there on the doorstep. You forgot that part. I ain't leave you. I left you with your grandma. No, no mama, no, you left uh-uh. me at the doorstep in the um, bassinet. Right. Yeah. You know, so, you know, people will forget, but that doesn't mean you have to go and battle with them mm-hmm. to prove a point. No, no. You did. You, mm-hmm. That's their experience. They don't want to own their stuff. Like that has know. nothing to do with me. Nothing. Mm-hmm. That's right. This is where I am at. This is my experience. This is my truth. And be okay, and you move on, because mm-hmm. you'll be wrestling that thing with somebody who stuck. don't want to step in their truth. Listen, and stuck, and you going around where they saying they lying. I'm tired of them lying. They ain't got nothing to do, do with you. Nothing. Ain't none of your business. Not one, nothing. Not your business. That's ain't right. your business. Mm-hmm. You're saying, you're saying be something. on that merry go round forever. Ab- mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wasting time. That's right. You're yeah. saying it. Yeah. Absolutely. So really quickly, because I know we have not done a great job at this because it's been so good, but. So for all the things that you are, a motivational speaker, a life coach, you have... Transformational coach. Ooh, yes. Transformational coach. Okay. Hello. Right. Um, awesome. You Right. And you have um, a dance, dance group. Troop. Yep. Dance group. Um, you have a book. You have... You have a website? Yes. Okay. So I want you to say right now... All your stuff, how people get in contact with you, if they want you to be a speaker, if they want to become, if they want to put their children in dance class. Do you do just children? Yes. Just children. Yeah. Okay, so talk about all that. How do they get in contact with you? I do all whatever. That all stuff. that. All that. So if you want to enroll your child ages four and up, um, I teach acrobatics and contortion. Ballet is dynastyartsandmovement.com. Make sure when you visit the website, you go to the mission statement, the values. Look at all of that stuff. I really tell people, you know, people will just go. They looking just for the price. Mm -hmm. No, go and see the value Mm -hmm. in the content. Dynastyartsandmovement.com. Okay, thank you. And if you want to, you know, have me out to be a speaker, you want me to set up a workshop for women, you know, seminar, it's beautyafterbroken.com. Excellent. And you can find the book there, too. It's going to lead you straight to Amazon. And actually, all this week, my book is $10 on Amazon. Mm-hmm. I'm prime, and you can get it in two days. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. And that's beautyafterbroken.com. Dot com. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I want to do very quickly, because listen, this time has gone by so quickly. So we are we're close to wrapping up. Mm-hmm. But if you would be so kind as to um, pray over the listeners and just. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm, just yes. deliver a word from just the Lord. Deliver. <laughs> deliver. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Mm-hmm. Thank you just for deliverance and transformation. Thank you, Thank Jesus. you for healing. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Thank you for never leaving us, even when we go through our storms and trial. You always continue to have your hand on us, Father Thank God. You. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we don't always see the glory. We don't always mm. see that what you're going to take us to, but... God, you got to take us through the storm. Thank you, Lord. And I, I'm just so grateful. Mm. Lord God, I thank you for the listeners who's right now, right in their um, home or their car, and they're listening in and saying, you know what, God, you, you, I was about to give up, mm-hmm. but I, I heard something tonight, yes. and I, I just... 
I, I, I know that you still got your hands on me. Amen. So yes. I'm not going to give up. I got purpose. I got I, vision. I you, know Lord. that you have the plans to prosper yes. me and not harm me. Thank yes. you, Lord. So, Lord God, I just thank you on tonight. I thank you for these amazing, mm -hmm. amazing guests, the, this this co-host, these hosts of this show for having, you. you know, me on. I thank you for them. They are so spirited. I love them. They got, they mm -hmm. full of energy. And I just pray over them and their family and loved ones oh, that they will you, be Jesus. able to continue this, this platform because it's amazing. They're going to reach the masses. They're going to be able to probably be a part of BET or thank OWN, you. Father God. And I thank you. Thank I thank you. you for all the children out there. I hope that they're listening and teenagers so that they can yes. get a word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I thank you for that nice meal. Mm. <laughs> that novena cook. Yes. Thank, thank, <laughs> thank you, Lord. She cooked. Thank you, Lord. She came no through. <laughs> thank you, Lord. So I thank, thank you. And all mm. blessings in Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. 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 The five fishes and two loaves. <laughs> Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And that Texas Tuck. Hello, hello. And so, again, we had Miss Lonnie Grant on the show, and we were just so excited. I mean, she's been mm. such an awesome, awesome yes. blessing throughout this whole hour. Um, again, you can contact her at Dynasty and Arts. Dynasty Arts and Movement.com. Again, Dynasty Arts and Movement.com. And that's if you want your child to um, get an awesome, awesome dance teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, if you want her for speaking engagements or to buy the book or to contact her in any way, um, beautyafterbroken.com. And again, that is beautyafterbroken.com. And it's $10 only this week. This week. Get the book. This week. Get the book. This week. Get get the book. Get the book. It's going to bless you. Got some amazing affirmations in there. Get the book. Get the book. You can write and it's after each chapter. You can write something too. Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Come on now. Come Hello. On now. Journal, <laughs> journal, journal it. Journal, journal it. it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you for listening in. This is when Christians speak bold and beautiful. And I said beautiful. Mm -hmm. Bold and beautiful. <laughs> right. Listen. Yeah. Let me get my words together. Jesus. Bold and beautiful. And we just thank you for um, listening in. We hope that something that has said has blessed your very soul. And we'll see you next time. Bye. That's right. Bye. Bye. Lisa sang the song. Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs>